Amen. Okay, so our title this morning is just Diabetes Part 2, but mainly that there's always smoke before the fire. And last week we covered Part 1. Um, I believe that was sweet tooth, sour stomach, and hot joints. Um, so last week we began our discussion on type 2 diabetes and the role of insulin. And this week we will delve a little deeper into how our bodies become insulin resistant and learn what we can do about it. If you remember, insulin is a hormone that is released in the blood by your pancreas. It sends signals to cells to help them absorb glucose or sugar from the bloodstream to be used for energy. This energy can either be stored in the liver, fat, or muscles in the form of glycogen to be used later. Now, insulin resistance. If insulin is what helps bring glucose into our muscles, into our, our bodies to be utilized for energy, then when we become insulin resistant, that means that, as the, name, the word suggests, we're resisting the insulin that's helping to facilitate um, energy in our bodies. Or the use of the fuel from the glucose. Insulin resistance is a resistance to the hormone insulin is a resistance to the hormone insulin resulting in increasing blood sugar. The cells, the cells in your muscles, fat, and liver don't respond well to insulin, therefore it can't be, they can't use glucose from your blood for energy. To make up for this, your pancreas makes more insulin because it thinks that, well, maybe I'm not sending enough because you know the cells are still calling out and saying that they don't have the fuel, so the pancreas sends more insulin. And over time, your blood sugar levels rise because the insulin is not reducing it. But as my title suggests, that there's always smoke before the fiery wrath of diabetes. And these were all of the signs that we went over last week. And if does anyone remember what some of those are? Yes, which is another name for that is, well, you'll see it is called acanthesis nigricans. Anybody else? What are some signs of insulin resistance? Weight gain. That's another one. There's something else with the skin. Dryness. Yes, that too. Skin tags. Dryness. And problems. So problems with blood pressure, problems with, as you said, heart, cholesterol. And another one, the main one, is a history of, of diabetes and high BP. I'll just put HBP in your family increases your chance of having it as well. But we know, of course, that your lifestyle and your dietary habits play a large role in that. And there was one more. Other hormone imbalances. We'll discuss that one a bit further. And I had one more. can't remember that one for now. But back to our notes. <clears throat> When the liver has taken up its capacity of glycogen, again, glycogen is glucose or blood sugars, um, what it needs, it then signals the muscle cells to come take up the excess. The liver can store up to around 5% of its mass as glycogen. However, when they, when they too become insulin resistant, and they become resistant to where they get to a point, just like while you're eating and stuff, you're hungry, you eat the amount that you need, and then after a while you're like, mm, I don't want any more food, I'm full. So your cells get to a point where I don't need any more blood, I don't need any more glucose, I, I'm full, so I'm resisting more insulin bringing that in. And so the liver can store up to 5% of its mass in glycogen, and after that point it becomes resistant to it. And so now the, the, it tries to send it to the muscles. But however, when they become insulin resistant, the fat cells are called up to take glucose to be used as triglycerides. Triglycerides are your blood fats. And so that's why insulin resistance can affect your cholesterol. <clears throat> Perhaps this is the reason, oh, excuse me. 
An additional effect of insulin is inhibiting the breakdown of fats, hence why insulin resistance is connected with weight gains. It inhibits your ability to break down the fat. It is no wonder that our fat cells are the last to become insulin resistant. Perhaps this is the reason why belly fat is usually the last to go during exercise. We know when you first begin an exercise regimen, it's always a hard part to, you know, reduce your belly fat. And so perhaps this is why it's usually the last to go during exercise and the first to come when you slip up. Carrying extra weight, especially in your belly, makes your cells more resistant to the effects of insulin on your blood sugar, thereby driving insulin resistance. Another one of these signs is for women, a waist circumference that is greater than 35 inches, and for men, 40. Just because you're at, say, 33 doesn't mean you're necessarily safe. It just means that you're on your way. But usually this is where you know you're at the danger zone. Should not exceed. No, not necessarily. If you're tall, for example, your waist size and pants, probably a 34. But what changes, it, it, you can be a 34 and Rashad can be a 34. What changes is the length. So you're probably a 34 by 34 in the length of your pants. See, that, uh, that accounts for your height. But still, you're, this is the most dangerous part to have fat in your body. If you get what I mean. You can't. How is that possible to have a bigger waist and no stomach? You mean, are you speaking of hips or waist? Be yeah, your waist is higher. I know it's more like, I know the difference, but I'm saying, I don't think everybody's waist are going to always be in the 20s. Somebody's waist are in the 30s means that they're close to diabetes. Yes. I would, you can, I have the links for, you can look up, but yeah, that is the sign of it. Oh, you cannot have a larger waist and not have fat there. Then that means nobody's ribs are that far apart. It's, it's not, well then how would, would it be possible to have yeah. a large waist? Like naturally big people, people I'm not talking about like fat people, but there are people who are big, right? And you would expect them to be in proportion to if the, you're a, the system. The, the only ex Shaquille O'Neal. The only exception I can think to that, with which would go along with what you say, is somebody who's uh, bodybuilding. That's or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, guess correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of more proportion, he's not expected to have a larger waist size, right? Yeah. yeah. So, there are many people who are, I'm 6'4", there are people who are 6'9", 7'2", mm -hmm. even, taller than me. Are you mm -hmm. expecting to have a waist size of 34? No, I expect, so right. no, for um, health, depending on the rest of these factors, okay. it shouldn't exceed 40. Even at that size? No. Yeah, unless you're, you're... But we'll argue that point later. Yeah, yeah. We'll, but yeah, you and Michelle will argue that point later. But for the sake of time. Uh, um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Where I ended, carrying extra weight, especially in your belly, makes, you, makes your cells more resistant to the effects of insulin on your blood sugar levels. Because that's, that's normally where, where that goes, the, the excess. Excuse me. So insulin resistance and prediabetes are closely related, and insulin resistance can actually progress to the development of prediabetes and type 2. And so that's the smoke before the fire, the fire obviously being diabetes. People with insulin resistance, um, this is also known as impaired, sens impaired insulin sensitivity. If it's sensitive, then it's not resistant. If it's resistant, then it's not sensitive. And what you want is for your cells to be more sensitive so that they can take up, take in more insulin so that the body can utilize it better. <clears throat> uh, skip a paragraph to diet and exercise. 
is the foundation of all diabetes management because it makes your body cells respond better to insulin. In other words, it decreases um, insulin resistance and therefore lowering your blood sugar levels. Even if you are healthy weight, shifting from a diet high in carb, meaning simple carbohydrates and sugar, and processed sugar, can reduce your insulin resistance. When we eat a high carbohydrate diet for an extended period of time, it creates a near constant demand on the body to produce insulin to move, to move glucose from the blood, leading to a lowered insulin sensitivity. <clears throat> And you can see this naturally too. The more sugar you eat, the more, the less sensitive you become to it. And so the, the more sugar you'll need. It's the same thing you can see with other things as well. Yes, exactly. The more, the more times you commit a sin, the less sensitive you become to it. And so you become resistant, resistant to the Holy Spirit. So switching to a diet that focuses on healthy proteins, fats, and vegetables can help alleviate some of this demand and, cre and create more balance. Hence why, especially in Sister White's time, they could say that Seventh-day Adventists who followed a health reform diet had, I believe it was a 40% less chance of having um, heart attack, cholesterol, heart issues, and things like that because you were eating things that were not um, making your body resistant to insulin. It's just eating fruits and vegetables have so many benefits. So your chances of heart issues and diabetes were dramatically lower. Up until recently, a couple of years ago, um, the people who lived in Loma Linda was like the third longest living people in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Nice. There's a study shown uh, in the Washington Times some years ago, and it said that uh, Seventh-day Adventists live an average uh, of uh, 11% longer than everyone else because of diet and lifestyle. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Isn't, isn't, isn't Dr. Oz, he's talked about it. Oprah talked about it. Mm-hmm. Mm. He carries it on. He's right as a dentist. Wow, I didn't know that. You know that he knows he has a book in his bag. He showed it in the church. That's what he's learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is all sugar the same? Question. Any answers? No. So fruits are loaded with fiber, water, vitamins, and minerals, which help to slow down the rate of sugar absorption. Fiber, especially soluble fiber, has many benefits, including reduced cholesterol levels, slowed absorption of carbs, and increased satiety. So that's your increased fullness. A single apple would make you feel quite full, less and less inclined to eat more food, Conversely, a bottle of soda has a remarkably poor satiety, poor fullness level, and people don't compensate for sugar by eating less food normally. And so even if you were to eat a large quantity of food, some people still have a soda afterwards. That's what, you know, that's what people order all the time at McDonald's or these fast food chains. And so that just makes, uh, with the graph I was started showing yesterday, that just makes a really high spike in your sugar when you should be kind of relatively constant throughout the day. You don't want this to happen. This is where problems happen, where you keep spiking it. You want your sugar to remain steady throughout the day. <clears throat> Skipping down to fiber uh, for time. Fiber helps in controlling blood sugar levels in the body, and all fibers can slow the, absor all fibers can slow the absorption of sugar and fat from food and therefore help prevent the spikes in blood sugar and blood fat after eating, um, possibly even reducing the inflammatory response to food as well. Also low or high, too low or high levels of growth hormone can cause insulin resistance. I won't touch on this too much, but for anyone who wants to research that, of human growth hormone and how insulin resistance, how it can impact insulin resistance, free to do so. So onto natural remedies, Currently, the main treatment for diabetes mellitus is insulin and hypoglycemic drugs. Although there are many proven side effects for these compounds, this fact has, has previously confirmed that herbal drugs have fewer side effects than chemical, chemically synthetic drugs. So researchers followed herbal drugs or agents to prevent and treating diabetes. And this is a study, this is derived from um, an article speaking of an experiment they did with um, feeding people guava 
guava fruit. Um, I put, put the link down below where you can read it and how um, it works better for decreasing um, insulin levels than say your typical drugs. And so even in this article, you see how it says that it, herbal drugs have fewer side effects and even more effective than many of the drugs out there. Um, ginger. Ginger can increase insulin sensitivity and improve digestion. And that's really what you want to do with insulin resistance. You need to increase sensitivity. Sensitivity. It's like when somebody's deep in sin, you want to increase um, sensitivity to the word of God. And so that they can hear the voice of God when he's speaking to them and not just be resistant to the Holy Spirit. So um, studies have found that its active component and the active component in gingerol makes sugar receptors on the muscle cells more available, increasing sugar uptake. And that's increase of sugar uptake means there's less sugar in your blood. Oh, and I should also say with insulin resistance, you can't, um, you can't measure insulin resistance with a blood sugar test because how can I explain this? If you... If you do, um, if you test your blood sugar, your blood sugar may come out, uh, say for example, if I'm insulin resistant and Michelle is not, our blood sugar levels can still be below the, the high amount, but the amount of work that I needed to do in order to bring it down to a safe level and the amount of work she needed to do to have it at a healthy level could be different. And that's where the resistance comes in. The only test that can really measure um, insulin resistance a bit, is HOMA IR. That's what it's called. It measures your the amount of insulin that was needed in order to bring down blood sugar. And so even if you checked your blood sugar levels, if it was normal, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that your body didn't have to go through so much just to get it there. And that's the um, that's what's really that that's what really counts. Because once your pancreas starts stops making the insulin that's when you will see it, the, it reflected on your blood sugar. And that's when you have the fire now. Fenugreek seeds, um, they're high in soluble fiber, which makes it, which um, buffers the, blood, the, the sugar in your blood and also makes um, insulin more effective. You can eat them whole, you can use them, um, you can take it into pills, you can soak them in water, or you can bake it into bread. Chromium is another. Did you mean to say normal? Because I'm trying to figure out why you need to bring your insulin down if it's normal. Huh? You said if it's normal, then the insulin test shows you what you need to do to bring it down. So I'm trying to figure out why if it's, if it's normal. Why if your blood sugar level is normal? Yeah, why do we need to bring it down? The blood sugar? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not speaking. I'm speaking of your insulin. I'm saying, for example, okay. The test now to determine diabetes or high blood sugar is, you know, taking, taking a sample of your blood and seeing how much free sugars are in your blood. I'm saying that if I have insulin resistance, I may be able to bring my sugar down, but the work, the amount of insulin that my pancreas needed to pump in order to do that, that's where the danger is as opposed to a regular person. That test can't show you the amount of work my pancreas needed to do. Because see, you get insulin resistance because your pancreas is working overtime to do that. And so it starts to break down. And so that's why when you become a diabetic, no more insulin, not enough insulin. So you have to get shots of it. Because you were producing so much, you wore out. Who's normal? The person you was, you was, you was juxtaposing that with a normal person. Yeah, Michelle. That was the example I was giving. Yeah, I was giving the example that Michelle and I's blood sugar levels are normal. If I took a standard blood sugar test, it could come up normal for both of us, but it doesn't, it doesn't account for the amount of work that had to be done to bring it down. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So I'll just run over through the names of these, but natural, that can, some things that can help is chromium. Even if you do, for example, a simple hair, a hair sample test can show your, your levels of these things. If your chromium is low, most likely you'll be at risk or have insulin resistance. Magnesium, um, 
Low magnesium levels is linked to insulin resistance. Vitamin D, we all know the importance of that. And even just improving it a little bit improves your insulin resistance. And if you combine that with what Sister White says about after we eat our meals, go outside and walk, the walking helps your muscles to take up more, um, more, blood, more sugar, remove um, more sugar from your blood, and the sun outside helps as well. So you incorporate those two, you know, your, your game. Vitamin C, okra, you can soak those as you would the fenugreek seeds. That helps with your high blood pressure as well as high blood sugar because those two are aligned. Milk thistle, uh, one of the drugs that's prescribed for uh, too high blood sugar, especially in complication with women's hormones, is metformin. Milk thistle has been shown to be even more effective than metformin, and so has berberine or quercetin, which is from your yellow colored fruits, golden seal, and things like that. But to close off, um, type two diabetes is a progressive condition, and many people end up needing insulin over time to keep their blood sugars in a healthy range. But it's important to note that it's possible to delay the progression of diabetes and even reverse this disease by correcting the diet, swapping out simple carbs for complex ones, health, incorporating healthy fats, that's your avocados, your nuts, your more natural, wholesome foods, and increasing fiber intake. Many making lifestyle changes such as exercise and reducing stress and eating, eating and worsening, resting in the word of God, I should have added there, will all help to quell the smoke, to stop the smoke before the fire begins. And so that said, let us close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to go over the health portion this morning. We pray that you may help us to, to, um, to keep a watch on our resistance to our resistance to insulin as we should keep a watch and with our souls and our resistance to the Holy Spirit. Please help us to see the correlation with body and mind and, 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 and spirit in serving you. Please help us to, to, um, to heed to the word, to the word that you, you give unto us and to keep our bodies in good health. And please forgive us of our sins and please be with us in the rest of this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.